With a new year underway and some extra time on my hands, I wanted to introduce transformation and new habits into my life. I started with a list of all the things I would like to improve upon and immediately felt overwhelmed and inadequate. I felt so much space between the person that I was and the person that I wanted to be. I find that feeling to be paralyzing. I read somewhere that idealization can be a form of self-hatred, that comparing yourself to your ideal form can become a covert way of picking your actual self apart. I've also heard that you can't hate yourself into becoming someone you like, and that really sticks with me. So after some thinking, I decided if I were to work toward any transformation or self-improvement, it would have to begin with self-acceptance and love. This past week, I set out to try some habits around mindfulness, presence, and self-compassion to see what sticks and what changes I might feel in myself. I know that a week is not a long enough practice, but at the very least, it's a way to dip my toes in the water. So it is Monday now, and I've just sort of journaled out the things that I want to do this week. I'll technically start tomorrow because it's already the evening now. So something that I actually already do pretty regularly is gratitude journaling. Um, so I'll continue to do that, and I'll probably try to show you the method that I use tomorrow when I do it. I want to implement something I was reading about called the 555 practice by Uma Bipat. Um, and that is to incorporate five minutes of meditation, five minutes of stretching, and five minutes of mental preparation into every day. So I'm gonna try really hard to do that just first thing in the morning, like before I look at my phone or anything else. I also want to more generally limit my screen time. I wanna spend time outside every day. Like it kind of depends on the weather, because it is January and I do live in New York. Um, but that's something that I really have been missing. I want to start reading a book on mindfulness and try to do that in the evening time at some point or maybe when I am outside, but just to sort of center what I'm reading around this practice. I'm out of breath. Another thing that I want to do is try to have conversations with loved ones um, about their spirituality or mindfulness practices. So that's my intention for the week. And tonight, I think I'm just gonna do some kind of nice like bath, face mask thing that I'll take you along with me for, that's about it for this first day. Okay, bye for now. for gratitude journaling. So grab your notebook or your laptop. The method actually comes from my friend Abby told me about this. It's from a book called The The Last Law of Attraction, a book you'll ever need to read. It's a combination of manifestation and gratitude journaling, which is really fun for me and maybe you'll like it too. You write down like this sort of introductory statement, which is, I gratefully welcome all positive experiences and outcomes into my life. And you write that down twice. So do it, do it now. After you've done that, you're going to write down a combination. I try to do every other one of statements about things you're grateful that are already in your life. After you do that, you write something in the present tense, so as if it's already there, but something that you want to bring into your life. Just keep doing that over and over and over again. 
I think I might try to do like these two sides. If you are into manifestation or a different form of gratitude journaling, please like message me or comment below because I love to hear um, other people's methods. Okay, do it. So I'm gonna do it now and you can do it too. Hi, Dad. Hey! <laughs> How are you? I've just finished watching the new president being sworn in, so I am pretty damn happy. Thank God. I know. I wanted to do little interviews with people that I think are really good about their mindfulness and meditation practices. Also, are you okay with like it going on the internet? I'll send you anything before it goes up. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I got my followers. They might. But they'll probably ready to accept. <laughs> Whatever. I think probably like 10 people will see this. That's fine. Well, I guess it's living in the present, you know, as opposed to the past or the future, because that's the only part of the world we really can touch. I think the mindfulness and the meditation is more of a tool. Mm. I think anybody can use it. And you can be a calm, evil person, or you can be a calm, nice person. So I don't think they're necessarily connected yeah but I think the more you're aware of what you're doing you're more likely to go the way you, you want to go so I think there is a, a thing like that we have this idealized version of ourselves but loving that more than the person that we are at the moment is a form of self-hate mm. you gotta love who you are you can't love yourself when that's like a conditional love or something to do meditation you really do have to accept where you are at the moment I'll tell you a story that's just that you asked if there's anything to help in meditation, but sometimes I go back to this and it's weird where one thing in your life really makes a difference. This was back in, I was in high school or almost out of high school and I was doing life-saving training. Um, you have to go rescue somebody <clears throat> that um, doesn't want to be, you know, is a drowning person. Mm -hmm. The person was behind me mm -hmm. and so I'm in the water trying to save somebody, grabs me from the back and wraps his arms around my neck, which is what a drowning person would do. Now, there are techniques that they teach you to get out of that. But at the moment, I, I remember being in that. It's a very panicky situation when someone grabs you like that. Right. And, and the guy was intent on making me feel like I was going to be drowned. But I remember at the moment saying, okay, I've just got to stop here. Mm. I just have to let go. Let him have his arms around my neck. But then remember what it is I do to get out of this. As soon as I quit struggling or quit trying to fight, he got scared and let me go. That was a real feeling of peace for me. And when you asked about, is there anything in meditation? Sometimes when things are really rough, I just remember that particular feeling. But you can just stop. You don't have to react to the situation.
Howdy, it is Thursday and I've just done the meditation. I did a longer one. I did 15 minutes. So I started with a 10 minute guided meditation. That was really nice. Um, I'll link that below if you want to try it too. Uh, and then I just did five minutes on my own. I did the preparation for the day um, and then my gratitude journaling. I'm saving the stretching because I think I'm gonna eat something and then do a longer like yoga stretching sort of workout. I just wanted to share with you, there was a quote in the meditation that I did this morning that she read that I really like. There are days I drop words of comfort on myself like falling leaves and remember that it is enough to be taken care of by myself. I think that's so nice. So that's my little check-in with you and I'll see you for yoga. Hello and welcome to my cooking channel. 75. We are creaming the butter and the sugar. I, it was supposed to just be softened, but I melted it a little bit. I will now add in 3 fourths of a cup of brown sugar and 3 fourths of a cup of granulated sugar. Okay, so almost forgot about you over there. Here I am creaming my sweeteners and my lover, as the French say. Egg time. Oh god. That looks weird. Now you add the vanilla, which I didn't record, and half a cup of the malted milk powder. It seems like a lot, doesn't it? I'm really eyeballing a lot of things here. Okay, I kind of have been forgetting to film. I started eating a lot of the batter, but here is what happened after I mixed the flour with the other thing that we did. So I'm gonna plop these onto my trays and pop them in the oven. There's too many. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? <laughs> A very special moment. Yeah, we're all okay, 
feel good. Yes! <laughs> I like that, me. I am... Oh, she's pregnant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am patient, knowing that whatever is of the highest good is coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> Pregnancy. <laughs> I spent much of the weekend continuing to balance stretching, meditation, and patient positive thinking while catching up on schoolwork and other things on my to-do list. I found myself more energized to start and complete tasks, and was pleasantly surprised to find that gently encouraging myself forward was just as, if not more effective, than kicking myself in the butt. Okay, so we have officially made it to the end of this week and a new one has started. So I just wanted to quickly drop in to say first of all, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm really excited to keep going with this series and I think if you like this one, you'll probably like the ones that are coming up as well. So maybe subscribe and hit the notification bell. That would be so cool. I also just wanted to sort of speak on the results of this week or trying these new habits. Um, obviously it's only been a week so I'm not going to pretend that my anxiety is cured or that I'm like completely at peace with myself but I will say I do feel a shift in my mentality especially from the meditation taking the time to meditate every day just reminds me that it doesn't matter how hard I am on myself like this moment will only be this moment and I can only control what I can actually control if that makes sense I feel like I can start to sort of live in more of a flow with my reality as opposed to living in a future fantasy where I am someone so far away from who I am right now. I think when it comes to like self-care practices or like even self-love practices, I can make excuses for myself that are like, well, I'm not going to take the time out to do that because that's selfish or that's self-absorbed. When in reality, like it's none of those things that like, we should be kind to everybody and within everybody comes us and I think it's exciting to think about the relationship that you can build with yourself and that that relationship can be something that builds you up and not something that's like disciplinarian but you have to nurture that sort of relationship the same way that you nurture your other close relationships um, so I guess that is it for this video. I'm definitely going to keep up with especially the meditation, the gratitude journaling. I hope you will take really good care of yourself this week and always, and I hope that I'll see you next time.